room and friends on Zoom. I'm going to start with a song of welcome written by my friend John Mabry. John is a retired UCC pastor who's done a lot of interfaith work, and he casts the welcome wide in this song. I heard it, and I thought, what a great way to begin today. So here it is. Come on in. We want you with us today. We know this place is sacred because you're here. Come on in. And no matter how you pray, invite that holy mystery you hold dear to be near. And let's begin. Come on in. So come on all you animals, and come on all our kin, and come on all our ancestors, and come on all our friends. Come on all you strangers, and people of goodwill. And while we're at it, all our enemies who will, you can come on in. We want you with us today. We know this place is sacred cause you're here. Come on in. And no matter how you pray, invite that holy mystery you hold dear to be near. And let's begin. Come on in. So come on all you sages, our hearts and Mahatmas. Come on all you devas, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Come on, saints and angels, you prophets and you priests, and all you holy women who never got the ink, you can come on in. We want you with us today. We know this place is sacred because you're here. Come on in. And no matter how you pray, invite that holy mystery you hold dear to be near. And let's begin, come on in. And you who've been rejected by the faith to which you're born, please know that you're welcome here to celebrate or mourn. And you who've left all faith behind due to hypocrisy or greed, You'll find that we're disgusted too. You'll find that we agree. So you can come on in. We want you with us today. We know this place is sacred because you're here. Come on in. And no matter how you pray, invite that holy mystery you hold dear to be near. And let's begin. Come on in. Good morning. Welcome to Washington Park United Church of Christ. I'm Lee Berg and I'm the minister here and we're glad to have you. We've got a number of guests with us today and we welcome you. Uh, we are a uh, informal group with a, a 97 year history of doing justice and loving mercy and walking humbly with the divine as we understand uh, the divine. We want to um, acknowledge that today's service is a little different. Uh, we're doing uh, All Saints Day recognition uh, in a few moments uh, here at the beginning of the service, and then uh, later we'll do a time of blessing of ballots and praying for the elections. As uh, what takes place or concludes, we hope, sometime in this next week, um, will have an impact on uh, on our nation and, um, and, and on how we do justice in our world. So as we begin, let's take a few moments just to uh, breathe. Those of you who are online, thank you for joining us by Zoom. Uh, we appreciate your presence with us, uh, and we look forward to uh, seeing you um, up close and personal when you can be with us, and if that's not possible, 
Uh, because you're in Arizona or New York, we're sure glad to see you uh, with us today. Uh, let's pray and breathe. Uh, let's begin with a moment of silence and meditation, and um, then I'll voice prayer for us. May we pray and breathe. God of love, spirit of life and of hope, spirit of comfort and peace, we are reminded that this is the day that you have made and we seek to rejoice and be glad in it. We pray that in these moments the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts would be sources of hope, of life, of love, of encouragement. We pray that as we uh, go through this service, honoring, remembering those who have passed from us, but who still live on with us in our memories, in our hearts, in our souls. We also lift up our nation and all who seek to be a part of this nation that we love and we care for so much. We pray that as we move into a time of change in our nation, we'll do so with a commitment to peace and a commitment to decency and to love, a commitment to reject violence, a commitment to honor, the stranger and the immigrant among us. For it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Allison. We gather with joys and sorrows and memories of joys and sorrows. We gather from hope or habit with happiness or heartbreak. We gather knowing that every scuffed pew and chair is a place a child sat and that every dusty hymnal was once held by someone singing. We gather not only to remember but, but to, to be, be present, present in, in this, this place, place to, our to own faith, our faith, and to, and be, to be truly supportive, supportive of, one, of one, another. one another. Now I invite you to rise as you're willing and able, body, mind, and or spirit, for our opening song, When the Saints Go Marching In. This seemed like the day for it. Number 
When the saints go marching in Oh, when the trumpet sounds its call Oh, when the trumpet sounds its call Oh, how I want to be in that number When the saints go marching in Oh, when the saints, oh, when the saints Go marching in Oh, when the saints go marching in Oh, how I want to be in that number When the saints go marching in Usually we do joys and concerns in our congregation later in the service, but today we're going to modify how we usually do things, and we're going to begin by asking you to speak into this place the names of those you wish to remember and honor. It is a tradition on All Saints Day to speak the names who have passed in the past year. But as we were preparing for today, one of the things that kept coming to me over and over again is that while um, the passing of my father and the passing of my mother have specific dates on which they died, um, the, the grief, the missing them, lives on beyond the calendar year. So I want to invite you to speak the names of those you wish to honor today, whether they've passed in the last year or at some time in the past. So that's how we will begin, and then we will do a ritual to honor and to celebrate them. And I'll just begin by speaking the name of Richard Gross, the father of a dear friend who did pass away this past year in South Dakota. Who will speak? Don Nab. Don Nab. Um, Lars. Lars. Alicia Carbunek and I mean Alicia Carbunek and Alicia. Alicia Cardenas and Alicia. Um, okay, we'll be sure to remember them. Um, Lewis Parmley. Lewis Parmley. Uh, Thomas Layton Proctor. Thomas Layton Proctor. And if I don't hear it right, you may have to repeat it. Um, who else? And online, just unmute yourself. Laura? Okay. Abby Topfer. Russ Topfer. Mom Topfer. Fran Topfer. And my brother, Ben Duff. Mm. Who else? All of our animal friends. All of our animal friends. Absolutely. Who else? Dave. Dave. Tony Imler. Okay. Tony Imler. Tony Imler. Uh, Becky Oglesby, whose service we had yesterday here. Thank you, Janice. Who else would you speak into this place? Bruce Ingalls. Bruce Ingalls. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Patricia. Patricia, thank you. Daniel Davis, Daniel Davis thank you. Marge Mazzillo. Who else? Uh, I have uh, Patricia and Joanne Davidson and Chris Blair and a dear friend of my sister's passed away last Friday, Mimi. Thank you, Jim. Who else? I was just going to mention, we've had some amazing women. 
Carol, right. I uh, will speak um, Dudley Bolyard. Dudley's the passed away this week, father of one of Cindy's dear, dear friends, and um, a noted geologist uh, from the area. And so, uh, Dudley, who passed away Thursday evening at the age of 90. Others? Elaine and Robin. Who else? Thank you, Curio. Anyone else? Jennifer. Now join me in this ritual to remember, honor, and celebrate. We gather today to remember, to honor, to celebrate the lives of loved ones and friends we've lost. The void left by those we lost is ever present. So God help us today to remember their lives, our shared joys, and the love that binds us with them beyond the sting of death and the grave. Fill our aching hearts with memories of better times, those that sneak up on us and make us smile at how we shared life with those we mourn. And even as we grieve, may we be grateful for those who walk with and comfort us through these days. May we remember murdered and missing indigenous women and persons of color, those whose lives were ended by violence May we remember those who died without shelter and food and those who mourned them. May we remember in this time those other sacred beloved creatures, small and large, who have left us missing their presence in our lives and the world. May we who grieve find strength in our shared mourning, comfort in your presence in each of us, and may your amazing grace sustain us as we face the challenges of our day. Amen. first of our sacred readings comes from 2 Thessalonians, Paul's letter to the church there. But we always mo must thank God for you, siblings who are loved by God. This is because God chose you from the beginning to be the first crop of the harvest. This brought salvation through your dedication to God by the Spirit and through your belief in the truth. God called all of you through our good news so you could possess the honor of Jesus Christ. So then, siblings, stand firm and hold on to the traditions we taught you, whether we taught you in person or, or through our letter. Jesus Christ himself and God, our parent, loved us and through grace gave us eternal comfort and good hope. May God encourage your hearts and give you strength in every good thing you do or say. Our second sacred reading is from Jennifer Williamson. Love, where it ever existed before, doesn't cease to exist. To speak of love in the past tense is, to, is not to know love at all. 
love goes on, being always a continuation and an extension of love. Your grief is but the continuation of the love you once experienced and will always experience. Grief is another name for love. Living God, touch our hearts Through these words and through your spirit Kindle our imaginations Breathe your life into our actions As we dream and work to shape your new world This week has been a struggle. Um, living with grief and gratitude, wanting to remember and honor those we love who have passed, recognizing we stand on the cusp of uh, another election season and um, big issues to be decided, a lot of things happening in our nation and world. As we gather today, 190 plus nations are gathering in Egypt in a conference on climate change. So how do we talk about living with grief and gratitude in the midst of all these things? Well, it's really quite easy. Let me share with you a quote, Peter. Grief and gratitude are kindred souls, each pointing to the beauty of what is transient and given to us by grace. Patricia Campbell Carlson. Kindred spirits, kindred souls, grief and gratitude. This week I was reading... um, the comments and insights of a hospice nurse and chaplain who talked about one of the things that she has observed in her work in ministry is that as people are preparing to transition out of life here among us, sometimes they will be visited in their dreams by a loved one who's coming to make the passing easier and take away the fear of death. Um, I'm glad to know that it is an observable phenomenon um, because as my mother was trying to prepare Cindy and me and my brother for her own passing, she kept saying to us, as I've shared with you before, that um, George, my dad, wasn't dead. And now he had been gone 19 years, but she said, he's not gone. He's been coming to see me every night in my dreams. That brought her immense comfort. It made me think that, okay, she's having dreams, but it didn't dawn on me that two things were at work. One, a natural, normal phenomenon that apparently happens among uh, all kinds of persons with all kinds of faith beliefs and perspectives as they're being prepared to die, they dream or imagine or are visited by the presence of a loved one. You know, at the time, I thought, Mom, that's nice. If it brings you comfort, that's nice. And then two weeks later, she was gone. Now, was it really my dad coming back and saying, I don't know. That's really not as important as the fact that it brought her comfort. And it gives me a measure of hope. 
I still remember the day we had his service at the Garden Oaks Baptist Church in Houston, Texas. And for our guests, yes, I used to be a, a Baptist. Um, and the sense of loss and separation I felt when the casket was closed. And I knew I'd never look on his bodily features again. So, and I had prayed for my dad's passing for at least two years as he struggled with Alzheimer's. So I had gratitude on one hand and very much grief on the other. Grief and gratitude. Paul was writing to the church at Thessalonica trying to, to deal with issues and problems, but he writes as one who realizes he may not and probably won't be visiting Thessalonica again. And he's trying to live, leave with them encouraging words, words of grace, of eternal comfort and good hope, words that are designed to give them strength. Jennifer Williamson, in this beautiful reading, reminds us that grief is an extension of the love that we felt for those we loved while they were present with us. Every now and then I'll think of something that my father used to say all the time. It's better to have something and not need it than to need it and not have it. He always wanted to be prepared in his work world and in our daily lives. He tried to prepare us. My mother was a prayerful woman. She, when she passed, I picked up a little kind of diary-like book. And it actually was a prayer book. And it had the names of individuals that she had been or for years that many of them already died. I mean, I, I picked it up and I looked at it and it was the husband of a colleague of mine at the National Education Association had had cancer and I'd asked my mother to pray for him, uh, Sheila Simmons' husband, and, and even after he passed, she was still remembering him and especially his wife in, um, in her prayer time. Interesting. Well, what does grief and gratitude have to do with an election season? Is it just totally different? Well, for me it's not because I grieve that we are a nation divided. I grieve that we are a nation, everybody is telling us, or many people are telling us, that could be on the verge of violence over an election. I grieve the loss of civility. I grieve the I grieve the, the and miss individuals who will run for office realizing that they may lose and will be willing to accept the votes of the people. When I worked in Washington, D.C., it was a time that you would see members of Congress, either in the House or the Senate, have vigorous debates over policy. But then if you went to a restaurant around Capitol Hill, you would see those same individuals coming from different political parties and perspectives, some conservative, some progressive, liberal, whatever you want to call them, having dinner and sharing life, able to carry on in a way that was uh, fitting of our nation.
I grieve the loss of those days for our nation. I think we all, in, to a certain extent, wish for better times. Now, where does the gratitude come in? And I can promise you, and I'll be absolutely on target here, there are going to be some results this week that we like and some results this week that we don't like, that scare us to death, regardless of our political perspective. That's going to happen. And we may think because of the results of the election one way or the other that the sky is falling, that we can't go on, that all is at risk, and it may be. But gratitude calls us to remember that we have been through these kinds of times before. One of the gifts, those of us who have been around five or six decades, that we can give to those who come after us, who are as worried as we are about their futures, perhaps even more. One of the gifts that we can give them is that memory of getting through difficult days before. Whether it was civil rights, marches and violence across the country in an earlier struggle, in the 60s, whether it was protests against the Vietnam War in the 70s, or it's the, the outpouring of opposition that happened recently after the death of George Floyd in cities across our country. We can tell those who come after us who weren't there for the civil rights movement, the Vietnam marches and the Vietnam War, that we can get through this. We can live through these days. Our nation's history got us through a civil or not so civil war. I'm grateful that we have in history an opportunity to learn from history and remember better times because that gives us the opportunity to work for better times. I love those days of strong political disagreements, but being able, especially on the big issues, to come together with one nation. We saw it on 9-11, and I believe we'll see it again, hopefully not brought on by tragedy. So, grief, gratitude, I grieve what we've lost. We grieve what we've lost. With gratitude, we claim good memories, good times. Not to be recreated as if we're trying to live in the past but to assure us that working together we can create new opportunities for good times and for better days. That's my hope and that's my prayer. Let's pray. Grief and gratitude, kindred spirits and souls, we give thanks for those we grieve and more. We give thanks for the love that leads to grief. We give thanks that even as we move years beyond the passing of someone we dearly love, that that still lives within us. And we claim for our nation the good times, the better times, the ability to do much good in our world.
we are grateful for those memories, for they call us forth to create, create new opportunities of caring for the marginalized and the disenfranchised, providing food for the hungry, shelter for those who live without shelter, hope for those who feel all hope is gone. May we not grow weary in well-doing as we join together to create good days yet to come. Amen. And now if you're able, please join us and stand with us as we sing forward through the ages. For some of us, it sounds like onward Christian soldiers, so please rise and stand as we sing forward through the ages. Better words. And if you have a new century hymnal handy and would like to look on, the music is in there, number 377. with blessing of the ballots and blessing of the election. Uh, well, many of us have already turned in our ballots. Uh, let me encourage you to do so if you haven't. Uh, you have to have it in before 7 o'clock Tuesday evening, so please be sure uh, and vote. Allison. Why don't you join me in the affirmation of faith, especially during these times? 
As people of faith, let us affirm who we are and whose we are and where we are called to be. We are in this together. We move together in covenant with each other and with God for the sake of all God's children, all of Earth community. We are in this together for the sake of God's world. We are the body of Christ and each one a beloved and essential part of it. We are not alone. We need each other. We are here to love each other. We, we are the body of Christ, Christ empowered by Christ, Christ for, for the sake of God's, God's world. In the United Church of Christ, we come from a history of mergers, of disparate groups coming together to form a greater whole. Our ancestors in faith knew what it meant to struggle, argue, create, disagree, and move into and for a future of diversity, hope, and community. May it be, be so, so with, with us for the sake of God's world. We affirm the goodness of creation and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our midst, creating and recreating the beloved community. And strengthened by the love of God and our love for each other, our nation, and our world. We move through this season with hope and hard work. We move, we move together, together into, into a future of justice, justice healing, hope, hope and, and community, community for the sake of God's, God's world. world. Amen. Let us pray together as we bless the ballots. You may have already cast your ballot, but you can bless it anyway. Um, you know, if you want to hold your hands forward to bless each other and our nation and our voting. Let us pray. O oh God of life, of hope, of voice, and of justice, we give you thanks for this awesome responsibility called voting. We give you thanks for all those who help make elections possible, secure, and safe. And even though all those dang political ads and phone calls make us crazy, we are thankful for the freedom of expression, fact-checking, fact and people willing to undertake the grueling job of working for candidates and running for office, even the ones we don't like, oh God. God of life, of hope, of voice, and of justice, we confess that our system is deeply flawed, that lies flow and division festers. Racism silences and strangles. Environmental damage and environmental injustice ravage your good creation. And we confess to our own despair and fear in the face of all this. It, it makes us want to stop and hide our faces and silence our voices. So God of life, of hope, of voice, and of justice, Bless us with courage, strength, good humor, and love, so we might continue to move through these times. Open our eyes and speak from our deepest foundations of power and compassion. Bless us, O oh God, as we have filled out our ballots and as we follow the election results. Bless this work of our hands. Bless our voting for the good of our nation and all your creation. Amen. May it be so. Amen. Amen. Since um, COVID hit, one of the things that we, we don't do is we don't pass the offering plate. But we do have an offering plate here on the communion table. So if you'd like to donate or give, we invite you to do that. The other thing that we always do is to remind you and those of you who uh, are joining us online that if you're struggling to make ends meet, uh, we will um, do what we can to help address those needs if you'll let us know what they are. And uh, we... Uh, if, if it's something that we can't directly address ourselves, then we have access 
to find services that may help you with the challenge that you're facing. So uh, thank you for the way that you give and support Wash Park and the ministries that are done um, beyond these four walls to uh, feed the hungry, to help shelter the homeless, uh, to care for one another and to care for Mother Earth, particularly as um, we go through uh, the impacts of climate change. So thank you for the way you give, and Allison, if you'll come and lead us in prayer dedication of our offerings. Join me in the prayer of dedication, please. We take courage, O oh God, for your spirit, spirit abides with, with us, us and we, and we rejoice, rejoice to bring our treasure to meet yours, enriching the community inside this familiar place and the community of those who live around us and may be blessed by our gifts and share your love as our hearts expand. Amen. Now I invite you to rise once more as you're willing and able for our closing song, Somebody Prayed For Me. We'll sing this verse two or three times at least. Somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed, I'm so glad they prayed, I'm so glad they prayed for me. Somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind took the time and prayed for me I'm so glad they prayed I'm so glad they prayed I'm so glad they prayed for me once more through somebody prayed for me had me on their mind took the time and prayed for me I'm so glad they prayed I'm so glad they prayed, I'm so glad they prayed for me. And in that same spirit, let me share with you that uh, Alice Silver had to return to the hospital this week, and so uh, Tom has asked us to remember them as they um, uh, work through this time. I think the biggest challenge now is she wants to go home um, and they're not quite ready to send her home was the last word I had. So we lift up Tom and Alice. Mm -hmm. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God make God's face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God smile and give you peace and joy and hope regardless of what happens Tuesday in the election. Amen. Go in peace. Be warm and filled.